Scots haven't won the Scottish Cup for exactly 40 years and haven't been in the final for 10. Since then, the Tynecastle side have lost no fewer than five times in the semi-finals. Aberdeen were one of the great cup sides of the 80s, but they haven't won the trophy now for six years, although they did lift the Coca-Cola Cup in November and so haven't lost a cup tie this season. Our commentary team at Hamden is Willie Miller and Rob McLean. Aberdeen make three changes to the team which suffered a 5-0 defeat at Celtic Park on Monday night. Scotland striker Scott Booth is injured and Dean Windus moves up front with 21-year-old Hugh Robertson coming into the midfield. The pace of John Ingalls gives him the nod over Brian Irvin and Brian Grant makes way for the return of the club captain, Stuart McKimmy. He's missed five weeks with knee trouble and Aberdeen are more than happy to have him back. Hearts make only one change from the team which beat Falkirk last week. Neil Berry drops out. The big decision for manager Jim Jeffries was whether to play international striker John Robertson. That persistent hamstring trouble has ruled him out. So, Alan Lawrence will play up front, bidding to add to the two cup final appearances he's already notched up with Airdrie. And the referee for this first Tenant Scottish Cup semi-final is Willie Young from Clarkston. Hearts get it started in glorious sunshine at Hamden. It's 40 years since Hearts last won the Scottish Cup. It's 10 years since they last appeared in the final. And since then, there's been heartbreak for them with five semi-final defeats in that decade. This is a disappointing sight from an Aberdeen point of view. That represents the unsold tickets, several thousand of them, of Aberdeen's 17,500 allocation. No problem getting rid of tickets as far as Hearts were concerned. All 17,500 gleefully picked up. Windus battling fiercely for the ball, back heel which found Bernard, now McKimmy, but the Dodds is onto it, and Joe Miller's got some room here, first time with the cross, and Dodds, it came off Windus, Joe Miller desperately trying to keep it in, did well, Stephen Glass, Hugh Robertson was the man on the left, that's where the pass was aimed, Robertson against Locke, he's strong and quick as Hugh Robertson, Woodthorpe will try again for Aberdeen. Gary Mackay, not convincing with the clearance, but Hearts can now try again. Fulton to Ponton. Here's Alan Lawrence. Charged down by Miller. And Stuart McKinney played it up for Windass. Loses possession. Ponton through the middle. Here's Alan Johnston. And out came Michael Watt. Be quick, you have to be decisive. It's a very good ball in here from Poynton, he does that so well. And it's Thomas just missing out, but Michael Watt, full credit, good save. Return from Bernard to Joe Miller. Does well. Wanted to put the cross in there quickly as well, having taken two hard squares out. But it was Paul Ritchie who got in the way. Stephen Glass this time, there's the header, and there's the save from Rusi, it was John Ingalls, not picked up, downward header, didn't quite get enough power behind it, but he certainly stretched Rusi. It's a better corner this time from Stephen Glass, drives it across the face, John Ingalls get a header on it, but comfortably taken by Rusi. Downfield from Bruno, there's an interesting challenge there between Ingalls and Lawrence, two of the quick men of Scottish football. Lawrence had to take second best there. Lock to Johnston. Alan Johnston can be out of the game for long periods, but he's a dangerous man. And he very nearly put the ball behind Michael Watt there. Looked as if he was shaping for the cross. It may have taken a deflection on the way in. And almost sneaked in. Well, I'm not too sure what he was trying to do here. It looks like a cross to me, but it takes a deflection, and that's why Michael Watt has to work hard on that one. And Johnston. Cahoon doesn't get there, but Alan Lawrence will. He's got some room. 
it's a good ball too. Gary Locke couldn't quite bring it under control. That was an important touch. Well tackled by Woodford. And again, superb play, superb defending. Not too hot with the clearance, but definitely dealt with that situation very well. There's the management team of Aitken and Craig. Won't be too unhappy with the way their team are playing so far, but need to carve out a few more chances. on Joe Miller, that was a bit rash and he'll certainly be spoken to by Willie Young and Joe Miller's taken a painful one by the looks of it Yeah, Joe Miller again looking to get the ball down but to me that's just a violent tackle that I would be very surprised if the referee doesn't book him Well, Poynton's escaped which Sean Ingalls can't quite believe obviously but Willie Young reckoning a word with Poynton was enough I don't have to tell you what those two thought about it. Now, Joe Miller is up and walking, having received fairly extensive treatment. Ball finding its way through there to Windus. He's bundled over under pressure from Paul Ritchie. Just some hopeful sounds from the Aberdeen fans that they might have a penalty on their hands there. This. He's a dangerous man in the box, difficult to tie down. Paul Ritchie, though, kept a cool head there after Windus had rung the alarm bells. Yeah, there's a bit of a tangle here. I think it's all legs. I don't think there was anything deliberate there. I wouldn't give a penalty for that one. Miller, who appears to be moving reasonably freely now. Point and throw. Johnston. Cut back cleared by Hugh Robertson. Alan Johnston, he's got such tight control, he's dangerous in those sort of situations. Hart's throw, Neil Poynton. Here's Lawrence. Bernard trying to charge him down. That's well done by Poynton. And also well done by Michael Watts, quickly off his line. Yeah, they've had a lot of pressure down here, pointing, getting himself into a dangerous position. Both players not too sure if they're going to go for 100%. Michael Watt winning out. And Joe Miller benefiting from the slip by Poynton. Onto his left foot from Miller! It was a good attempt. The Hearts players reckon that Gio Russi got a touch to it. But the goal kick is given. It's good work by Joe Miller again. Running at defenders, taking defenders on. Clips inside, looks for the shot at goal. Good strike at goal, to me that's an excellent save. Again, Miller, always direct, always positive, looking to take players on, tries to curl it in at the far post, good save. And that's half-time in the first of the Tenet Scottish Cup semi-finals. No goals, closest thing at Michael Watts' end, a deflected effort of Colin Woodcock, which he saved at the near post. It was a John Ingalls header, saved by Gilles Roussi at the other end, and a Joe Miller shot, which was marginally off target. But this cup semi-final really still to come alive. Half-time, Aberdeen nil, Hearts nil. Aberdeen restarts, keen to preserve their unbeaten record in cup competitions this season. Already the Coca-Cola Cup is locked away. I'd like to add this one to it, but hearts have to be overcome first. Gary Locke did well under pressure there from Hugh Robertson. Played the ball off the Aberdeen man. He has the throw. One by Woodthorpe. Johnson, who so far has been well policed by Woodthorpe. Well, that's a neat touch from Alan Lawrence. Pace to take him away from John Ingalls. Cahoon is in the middle. Alan Lawrence might go in alone. Disappointing finish. That was a real chance for Hearts. He made the opening himself, but couldn't take it. Johnson picks the ball up in midfield here. 
Nice turn, plays it in. Lawrence just gets in front of Ingles here, drives at the goal, making pace out the ground up all the time. Strong option near post. I felt it was better going to the back post. Hugh Robertson missing out on the header. He, of course, having switched to the right side of the midfield now after Aberdeen made the change. And there's Stephen Glass, who's now playing on the left. Back to Robertson. Windus is in the middle. Dodds there too. And Paul Bernard. Here comes the cross. Billy Dodds, Windus, and Dodds at the far post, climbing. And it's beaten away by Gary Locke. And that was a close squeak. Robertson looking to get it onto his left-hand side, putting in a great cross there. It's Windus who balloons it up in the air. Dodds is waiting for it, but good clearance. Here comes the corner kick. Windus was waiting for it, didn't quite reach him. All the way back with Gary Smith. Given away one way and then the other. Now it's back with Aberdeen. Now it's back with Hart. Gary Mackay just hammering it down into the corner. Alan Lawrence won't catch it. Well, Lawrence has a, a wry look back at Gary Mackay. That's not the sort of service he's really looking for. against Locke. Good call for Dots. Nice knockdown for Dean Windus. Ryan Grant's making a good forward run here. And it's being matched by Paul Ritchie. He just lets it run for the goal kick. Ryan Grant playing in the central midfield area now with Robertson having moved right and Glass having moved left. of tennising at the far end. Aberdeen not having sold their quota of tickets. The ones who are here want the team to do something in front of goal. With this match, it's stalemate at the moment. That's well won by Johnston. It's possessed by his own man, Gary Mackay. Still has it, though. Aimed at Lawrence. Ingalls is there. Just got his toe to it. The pace of Alan Lawrence is a real problem for the Aberdeen defence. And Ingalls is really stretching. Mackay popping up in the right-hand side of the park here, showing great determination, looking to make the run, eventually playing the pass in for Lawrence, and Ingalls had to be sharp. Steve Fulton will swing this one in, left-footed. Knocked up by Poynton. That was Ritchie. John Cahoon is peeled off again at the back post. Still not cleared for Aberdeen. And that ball from McManus is safely back now with Michael Watt. It's a long kick out. Not fully dealt with there by McManus. Billy Dodds has it. And Glass, first time with the cross. It's a tempting one for Windus. A good bit of covering by Paul Ritchie. You can see to the corner, but it could have been worse than that for Hearts. We see organising things in front of him for this corner kick. Stephen Glass with the corner kick, John Ingalls. Away from Locke, only as far as Brian Grant. Here's Robertson. Onto the right foot. In it goes! Across the face of the goal, Billy Dodds was there, Dean Windus was there too, looking for scraps, but it came to nothing. This is a good chance here for Aberdeen, Brian Grant looking up, playing it out to Robertson, Robertson looking to get it in the left foot, goes with the right, good shot across the face of the goal, just by the post. Clash of, clash of heads there. Brian Grant is the Aberdeen player, Dan. And Gary Locke of Hearts is injured, both getting quick treatment. Yeah, 
three of them go up. Young Stephen Glass caught in the middle there. Taking a knock, it looked like from Gary Smith, and it looks a sore one round about the mouth area. The Hearts fans are applauding because their team are about to make a double change. It's the experienced campaigners McPherson and Robertson coming on. Alan Lawrence is going off, as is Steve Fulton. So Hearts making a bold move to try to turn this game their way. Stephen Glass looking a bit dazed, he's taken a bad knock in the nose and mouth area. Poynton bundled over, Cleon says the referee, that looks as if it might have been a free kick against Duncan Shearer, but at least it's now the advantage. There's Johnston, it's a neat ball for Robertson. Robbed by Gary Smith, who showed no signs of panic. John Robertson, a penalty box player. He's tucked away chances from that sort of position before. A race on, which minus one. Win this. Back in the midfield now, so Duncan Shearer came on. Bernard took a barge in the back from Locke. Here is Paul Bernard. Duncan Shearer's there. Billy Dodds at the far post, it went to neither. That's a disappointing end to Aberdeen's move. Bernard made a good run forward, it was a good position. It came tonight. It's a good break forward here from Windus into the space, eh, from Bernard into the space, but he's got to put in a better cross than that. That's a wasted ball. Poynton will try again. Look to be body checked by Frank Grant. That's the thinking of Willie Young. It's a difficult one to call here. Poynton's hit the ball too far in front of himself, and Grant just went over to uh, make the challenge. A hard one for Grant, but it looked like a foul. David McPherson in the box for the free kick, but it was a poor one, although it did force Colin Woodcock into conceding the corner, but with the likes of McManus and McPherson up, Hearts might have made more of it. They do have a second opportunity here to put some pressure on the Aberdeen defence. There's Poynton's corner. There's Dave McPherson's header! Cleared by Michael Watt! And it's there! John Robertson has scored! John Robertson doing what he's best at when the scraps are around. He'll happily take them. Dave McPherson caused the problems from the corner kick with the downward header. Aberdeen couldn't get it clear, and with ten minutes left of the semi-final, hearts have struck. There's Dave McPherson climbing high, he nodded it down. Robertson took a first touch and then a second, and over the line it went. There's a good corner here from Poynton. Hangs it towards the back post, knows that McPherson's going to be there. McPherson gets the header, Robertson gets the final touch, and it goes over the line. That was the reason Jim Jeffries brought John Robertson into the play. He knows that there's not a better chance taker in Scotland on his day. And that was over the line. So Aberdeen with not much time to reply to the John Robertson goal. He's not fully fit, John Robertson. He's been struggling with hamstring problems all season. That's why he started on the bench. Well, they don't look too happy, but... They'll be a lot happier. They're certainly happy. The Hearts fans have waited a long time to get back to a cup final. 1986 was the last time against Aberdeen. Windows wins it. Danny Smith. Aberdeen would really like to get Stephen Glass involved at this stage. He's the sort of player that can get in telling crosses. Firstly, he has to get past Hearts players like John Cahoon. Tackled by McManus. This is the time to make the tackles count, make them good. Colin Woodcock winding up with a long throw, then settling for the short one. His glass trying to work it in behind John Cahoon. Was he fouled? Yes, he was. 
for the young having words with Cahoon. And I wonder if that's for something John Cahoon said. It didn't seem like the most serious of infringements. But uh, maybe the protest of Cahoon earned him that yellow card. Now, what can Aberdeen do with this free kick? In from glass, up goes Rusi, up goes Duncan Shiro, and Shiro scores! Shiro rescues Aberdeen! His seventh goal of the season, and he hasn't scored one more valuable than that. Aberdeen looking as if their cup dream was over, and suddenly up pops Duncan Shiro. Joe Rossi, I don't think, will want to see this again. Got caught on the cross ball, and Duncan Shearer made Hearts pay. It didn't look possible that Shearer could score from this angle. He's right on the byline and comes off the back of his head and drifts into the far corner. Once again, Glass hangs it to the back post. Rossi beaten. Shearer off the side of the head into the far corner. Quite amazing, the two substitutes, the two men of many goals over many years, Robertson and Shearer, have come into this game and scored the important goals. So Aberdeen looked as if they have earned the replay, although there are still several minutes of stoppage time to be added on, and anything could happen. The Aberdeen fans considerably happier than they were a couple of minutes ago. Say halfway towards the halfway line. Strong Kimmy didn't get there. John Robertson will keep this in. Neil Poynton's inside. Johnston's in the middle. There is Johnston's header! Alan Johnston has scored for Hearts. And this match takes another amazing twist. The cross from Robertson and Alan Johnston was there. The powerful downward header and it squeezed its way under Michael Watt. There's John Robertson out in the wing here, he's got to be good, he's looking up. He puts the ball into the box rather hopefully. Johnson, good head up down. Perhaps Michael Watt will be a bit upset about that one. Again a good cross into the box, Michael Watt down, it was under his body. There was so little happening in this game for so long. Alan Johnston, by the way, has been booked for overzealous celebrations at the end there. an incredible game that's been it's really disappointing for long periods of time and it's really come to life at the end so Aberdeen try again to salvage something out of the semi-final Stephen Glass's corner kick claimed confidently by Rousse that's just about the biggest cheer of the afternoon apart from that Johnston goal the Hearts fans relieved to see the ball clutched to the chest of Gio Rousse. We are not worthy, I think, is the message. Lots of agitation on the Hearts bench. They want to hear this whistle, and they want to hear it badly. There is the final whistle, and Hearts are through to the final of the Tenant Scottish Cup. Handshakes and braces on the Hearts bench. Jim Jeffries and his team have made it. It's ten years since they made the final, and there's the man who scored the golden goal in stoppage time at the end. Alan Johnston, a header from John Robertson's cross, it beat Michael Watt. Jim Jeffries has experienced it as a Hearts player, now he'll take them back as the Hearts manager. It was an amazing game, really, still made for so long, and then the game really exploding into life at the end. Firstly, John Robertson getting a hug there from Jim Jeffries. He came on as sub and scored a typical Robertson goal. Duncan Shearer equalised, but the Hearts fans and players were not to be denied. And Alan Johnston's winner takes them on to a date, a big date for them at hand. And it's 40 years since Hearts have won the trophy. And they may well just fancy themselves to rewrite the history books. Johnston, he'll remember his hat-trick at Ibrox earlier in the season and he'll never forget the day he scored a winner and a dramatic winner too in a semi-final of the Scottish Cup. 
So a dramatic afternoon at Hampden Park and the final score in the first Tenet Scottish Cup semi-final. Aberdeen 1, Hearts 2. I'm looking forward to the greatest day of my life now. We've got the final, we've, we've uh, failed in a lot of stages like this. And I think that today was a typical semi-final, it wasn't a great game. We didn't play well, we looked scared of them at the half. We tore them at the half time to go out there and believe in their cell and try and get us... You know, I said I would back them if we just went out there and steady going out and not having a go. At least go out and if we get it, I'll back you if you have a go. Because if Aberdeen were a good side, they would have been beating us at half time, but they weren't. And we say now it's your chance to go and play. So delighted for the supporters and we're now, we're now looking forward to a great day. Jim Jeffrey showing all the emotion of a famous victory. And as the jubilant Hearts fans headed off to begin their celebrations, John Robertson emerged from the dressing room to talk to Rob McLean. John, you could make that number 15 jersey your own. I said that to Gaffer, can I wear it in the final as long as it's for the start? But uh, no, we're just delighted for everybody at the club. The manager's over the moon in there. The players just don't, the young boys don't know what's happening. And they had the older boys, we're not used to getting the finals. It was a game that took a long time to come alive. Typical semi. It was very nervous for both teams. Um, it took the goal to get it going. But once the goal went in, it was tremendous excitement from there to finish. And Big Duncan, usual up there, never let him off. Tremendous head on, but I thought there it is again, snatched away from us. But um, I thought it was John Cahoon that knocked in the winner. But it wasn't until I got in the dressing room that told me it was really sticky. So delighted. Gave the fans something at long last because when that equaliser went in, God knows what they were thinking then. You haven't mentioned your own goal yet. You had two, two well, cracks at getting it across the line. Well, Big Dave McPherson said that when we were going on. He says, look, I'll knock it down, you score the winner. <laughs> and he'd done it, and I hit the first one really well, and I just seen it bobbling up, and I don't know what went I think it went off my shoulder in the end, just managed to force it over the line, and I was off. You're a real hearts man, so obviously tonight, really strong emotional feelings running through you. It means a lot for everybody at the club. I mean, Gary Locke's in there crying, Gary McKay's crying. Uh, me and John Cooney are just trying to count the bonus money at the moment, it's working out <laughs> much it is, but uh, no, it's tremendous for everybody and the young lads don't realise what it is. The manager said at half time, it's, it's taken Gary, John Cooney and myself 10 years to get back to a final. Don't think it'll come next year because it might never come. And they've went out in the second half and, and proved they wanted to be in the cup final and I think that in the end was just a slight difference between the teams. Yes, yeah, a memorable day for Hearts after all those semi-final disappointments. At last, they're in another Scottish Cup final. And yet, as John himself said, Derek, it was a typical semi-final. It was, to be fair, a poor, poor game until the last 10 minutes. Well, 18 minutes, it was very, very poor. But you very rarely get classic semi-finals. There's too much at stake for both teams. That's why at the start, I mean, everyone was back behind the ball. You saw very little football. But in the end, it was a crack in 10 minutes. Aberdeen, I'm sure, were disappointed because they yeah. totally dominated the first half in terms of pressure, but again, never looked like getting the opening goal. But it's all about chances. It's what you do in the last third of the part, do you? Not what you do in the first two thirds, playing all the nice stuff. It's what you do when you're in the box, and there weren't many chances created today. Mm -hmm. And Hart's youngsters, understandably, looked nervous, didn't they? Well, that's why I fancied Aberdeen at first, because there's so many experienced players in that side, gone through it all before, obviously won the, the League Cup earlier in the season. I thought they were favourites to win it, but the Hart's youngsters, as they've done all season, uh, stood up and were counted today. Let's take a look at the goals then. The first of them coming 10 minutes uh, from time. Funny goal too, wasn't well, it? Well, I mean, Hart's always hit the ball to the back post, and when you've got somebody six foot four there, he's always going to get a knockdown. And uh, that wee man, he's done that for 10 years, isn't he? In and around that box, many goals as he scored, but he's the first to react to this. You know, he's there, there's three defenders. He's the one that wants that first. And what we're seeing is, did he head it, or was this ball put in with his hand? That was the thing. To me, I think he went for the header, it sort of missed his head, it came down on his chest, and to me it looked as if actually he punched the ball into the net here. Mm. I mean, the referee can't see that because it's impossible with all the players around him and the linesman. To me, the last thing that came off was his hand. It certainly went over the line, there's no doubt about that, but mm. I think there's a wee bit of an arm involved. But uh, the Aberdeen players weren't complaining, mm. and that's always a sign that they thought it was fair. Yeah, and back came Aberdeen, obviously, and John Cahoon terribly upset to give away the free kick. He was booked, and from that, Duncan Shearer headed a very unlikely equaliser. Well, again, it's just one to the back post. You're looking for somebody to try and get on the end of it, and really nobody near Duncan Shearer. I mean, he's tremendous in the air. Why is there no Hearts player around him? But really, Rousset has got to look at himself, caught in no man's land. The ball at the back post looks up, he goes for it right away, but really he shouldn't be there, should have been on his line, well over his head, and, and Willie Miller called it right. I mean, Duncan was turning the other way when it hit the back of his head and goes into the, the corner. But again, 
I keep stressing that you should always have two men on the post, the near and the, the, the back post. Mm. There was nobody there. Had there been somebody there, it was a, a case of just heading it away. Yeah, That came three minutes from the end, and I think we all thought, yeah. well, this is it, we're coming back for the replay a week on Tuesday. And then that winner came, and again, John Robertson involved, wasn't he? Well, an inspired substitution, as Jim mm. Jeffries will tell you, but, the, but he drags Ingles out there, and that's a, that's a great ball, and it's not one of these balls that's it's drifted away in the air. He struck it, they're not the biggest of strikers, but again, Aberdeen have got three defenders there, and the two Hearts boys get in, in front of, of all three. That is bad defending as far as Roy Aitken is concerned. Look, Cahoon was at the back there as well. The ball didn't bounce as it should have for, for uh, what. You'll be disappointed when he sees that tonight, but I don't think he could have saved that. Hearts will inevitably be second favourites for the final, no matter who, yeah. who wins tomorrow. But do you think they will perhaps relax and enjoy the match more than today's nervous semi-final? I think they will, but it's the last game of the season. I think every club wants to be there on the, the 18th of May, and they've got there with these kids. I mean, that, the whole of Edinburgh, well, at least half of Edinburgh, yes. will be joyful to the 18th of May, and they'll live on that. I think their, their club form uh, will improve as well, because they'll look forward to that. They will enjoy their day out. All right. Well, who? Well,